everybody this is your Rachu back again with a new video and in this video on the special request of Malvika uh, Anil I am going to discuss about the Hull storm cough now this very topic is very important for net gate as well as GSI and this is very confusing topic too so be there with me till the end of this video and we'll rock okay so by the way this is my website here we'll get everything regarding CSR so have a look on that we converted these two books through Zillow book and uh, Tarbuck book into MCQ format and 6500 questions are there over here so have a look on that uh, okay so let's start with definition so this Hallstrom curve is basically a kind of graph it's a kind of diagram which gives you relationship between size of the particles different particles like pebble cobalt boulder clay sand with velocity of river and finally it will give you how and under which velocity condition under which particle size these particular sediments are either getting eroded getting deposited or transported okay so here we can see that uh, this is typical Hallstrom diagram here we can see there are two axes y and x axis both the axes are having logarithmic scale so 0 0.1 then 1 then 10 for 100 then 1000 so 10 times there is a rise over here also it's a logarithmic scale 0 0.001 0 0.01 0 0.1 1 like that okay now in the y axis we have flow velocity or river velocity which is in centimeter per second on the x axis we have particle size so here we have particle size from 0 0.001 to 1000 and on the basis of that uh, we have particular reasons of different sediments clay silt sand gravel pebble cobble and boulders now in the diagram we have two curves the above curve is also called entrainment line basically it's a it's a line of it's a basically a, a minimum velocity required to pick up any sediments so here this line is also known as mean or critical erosion velocity curve okay then we have another curve over here which is a settling uh, velocity line or fall velocity line or mean velocity line so there are various name okay so mean fall line settling velocity line fall velocity line different names okay everything is same okay now let's discuss this diagram in detail now this particular diagram is based on the series of experiments done by this uh, particular scientist Hallstrom. So what he did is he took a kind of a tank which is one meter uh, depth having one meter of depth having uh, water in it and he put uh, these different particles okay clay, silt, cobalt, pebble, boulders and provide different flow velocity to see how they react to particular water flow okay so uh, let's we'll see this thing in detail over here so uh, the first thing the first over line over here this upper line you see it is also known as entrainment line or you can say here we can see different names critical erosion velocity curve or mean erosion velocity curve so different names are there okay so it is basically a critical velocity a minimum velocity that is required to just pick up the particular sediment into the motion okay so it is required to just begin the movement of that very sediment okay uh, one more thing here we can see that coarser the grain higher the velocity is required Matlab, for a boulder we need more flow velocity for this you can see literally the velocity is more for a pebble the velocity is little bit less so here we have around 200 200 may we can move the cobalt but for boulder we need around 800 to 900 centimeter per second of velocity why because the size of boulder over here you can see literally it is around uh, you can say 3 to 400 and for a cobalt the size is relatively less it's only 20 you can see at this point it is 20 so you can say that coarser the grain higher the velocity is required but what about this this clay here we can see that the the flow velocity for clay 
is equal to the flow velocity of Coben. But the size is very less. Here it is 0 0.001. While for Coben, the size is around uh, 20, you can say. Why it is so? It's all because here we have clay particles. Th these fine clay particles have, uh, you can say, a electrostatic charge on it. And because of that, they have some kind of cohesive force, some kind of clumping nature. They clump together and in this way, they basically resist to erosion. Okay, so if you provide more velocity also, it will resist. That's the reason why for a movement of clay, we need high flow velocities, which is equal to uh, Cobel, uh, sometimes it is equal to Cobel's. Okay, itni velocity chahiye, why? because of the charges on clays okay so this is the reason why uh, we have these kind of curve it's not like this according to this statement the course of the grain higher the velocity is required the curve should be parallel to the downward curve but instead of this parallel curve we have somehow a, 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 a u-shaped curve the reason is the electrostatic charge present on the clay now think of it suppose we have a one meter uh, depth deep tank having a flow velocity of say uh, say uh, we have flow velocity of 100 okay at this situation we have say people of uh, 10 millimeter size is it moving or is it stationary so you can see that at 100 centimeter per second and at 10 over here 10 is over here so it is some somewhere here this point matches somewhere here it is not uh, you can say it is not deposited yet uh, here this particle particular pebble will transport it okay if we further decrease the velocity in that case it is in the stationary condition say we uh, keep it flow velocity one centimeter per second in that situation it will stationary if we increase the flow velocity it starts transport it starts moving and if you further increase it is so kind of erosion this thing also erosion process also so in a case of erosion uh, it, it is basically required a minimum velocity to pick the sediment up okay if you decrease the velocity it get deposited okay is this clear now if we say we have a combination of sediment where a sand is mixed with pebble cobel and boulder we kept all these mixtures into one meter deep tank okay and we start uh, providing uh, say flow velocity of 200 centimeter per second now for 200 centimeter per second you can see anything which is behind uh, which is uh, in the left side of this line this is 200 line 100 200 so which is in this side of line will start moving but what about the uh, covalent boulders so they go 200 line is somewhere here no 200 line is somewhere here so pebble will move sand will move even silt will move okay uh, the clay will not move for clay we need further more energy okay so these much of things will move but for cobalt and pebble we need further energy we need further flow velocity okay so in this way he conducted the experiment and saw ki under which situation which particle will move and then finally he draw curve like this okay now let's discuss about the lower line so this lower line is basically gives you the relationship between the flow velocity which is over here on the y-axis and a particle which is already in motion so transportation means it is already getting transported in different ways like saltation through siltation through rolling and all okay so different ways are there okay now uh, here this line gives you critical velocity for the deposition of sediment a fall velocity for the deposition of sediment so if you 
provide suppose energy uh, more than that in case a critical velocity for uh, say deposition of pebel is say uh, it is 20 uh, for uh, five uh, for uh, eight millimeter particle okay if you provide energy more than 20 in that case it is always moves in a transportation medium it is always there in rolling suspension and all but if you provide less energy than that then it will simply deposit it okay on the flow on the on the one meter tank okay now this very situation is not ideal in, in real case in the real river the depth of water is not one meter the the flow is not uh, laminar okay here what we conducted is it is in the laminar flow but in river the things are somewhere turbulent there is a effect of shear there is a effect of uh, that stress generated by uh, preso over the water column all these things are there here the things are under ideal condition one meter depth okay so there is a change okay in reality things are different real me river me this will never work okay now uh, one thing also at a, any grain size velocity required to start moving the particle from rest is always higher point to be needed it is always higher than that it keep it moving for example suppose cobel uh, is over here the velocity to keep it moving is more than the velocity of deposition so for deposition uh, the velocity is 100 centimeter per second but for keep it moving the velocity required is more than 100 that's the fourth line over here so for deposition we need less velocity okay is this clear okay now this Hallstrom diagram is accurate only for those sediments where uh, the depth of flow is one meter where the flow is laminar where there is no stress conditions shear conditions are there okay so these are basically demerits you can say or it is not valid everywhere you can say okay the problem is that the forces that are required to move the sediment are not only related to flow velocity but at the same time there are different forces which can affect uh, the movement it's not the flow velocity only okay it can be a uh, sear it can be a stress it can be a uh, overlying pressure okay now the boundary shear stress is particularly important force and it varies with the flow depth okay so this this shear stress is very important already discussed earlier okay clear uh, sorry for this disturbance guys okay now one more thing i have a question suppose you have a cobel and uh, no we have uh, suppose you have a pebble and a clay now you have to tell me where you need more energy for where you need more flow velocity for the movement in a case of pebble or in a case of clay here we can see that the line of clay and pebble is different you have to see and you have to tell me where you need more energy okay more flow velocity okay so give me the answer in the comment section and uh, till then stay tuned stay curious bye everybody thank you very much